addiction of any kind is not to be taken lightly. But what is addiction? Evolutionarily, it began as a way to indicate to us that actions that help us survive are good and we should keep doing them. Okay, that's fair enough, but when you're the CEO of the largest entertainment company in the world, i.e. the Bob Iger company, and that addiction is making bad decisions, well, make them get costly. As things go pear-shaped in a spectacular way. In fact, if you wrote down every bad decision Disney made in the last what, eight to 10 years, put that down on paper, you could lap the Great Wall of China twice. You could see that mofo from space. Case in point, Bob recently decided to go one-to-one -one with Governor of Florida on well, over the right to teach bedroom antiques to minors. Weird, 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 weird. And he lost. Thankfully. A decision that will reportedly cost the company, well, trillion dollars over the foreseeable future. That's a lot of money. Say that again. That's a lot of money. Well, looks like Disney's, i.e. Bob Iger's, latest faux pas. What does that mean? In English, it is defined as an embarrassing or tactless act or remark in a social situation. It has hit the web. What are we talking about? Well, the decisions to reboot Pirates of the Caribbean without its main star, Johnny Depp. Good luck. Which actually raises an interesting question. Are you retarded? <laughs> no, not that question. That's so. Um, no, the question is, can it be done? If so, how? If not, why? So I thought I'd take a look at that question and break it down and give you my thoughts for what it's worth. First question, I guess, is can there ever be scenarios where different actors taking on the same role is not only successful, but required for it to be successful? Now, I can think of at least two or three off the top of my head. First being Doctor Who. Doctor Who is a cleverly written story element built into its mythos that not only requires a different actor to take on the role and give it a fresh spin, it actually makes that change an event to look forward to with anticipation present and previous Doctors excluded. Although to be fair I did make it through at least three to four Jodie Whittaker episodes before eventually tapping out. Pregnant. Why me? Yes you are. I'm almost ready to pop. How did you get like that? On holiday. The other one's James Bond, ironically, a role that's currently up for grabs. Actually, he's just been grabbed. Well, actually, he's been offered, yet to be grabbed. Point is, just like Doctor Who, it's expected that at some point or another, another actor will take on the role and introduce a different type of interpretation of that character. In fact, type in Bond 26 and you see there's a huge amount of buzz around who could potentially be taken on the role. Shut up! Now, in my personal opinion, Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, in particular the Captain Jack Sparrow character, isn't that type of role. I, you can't just slap any old actor in a role and call it a day. If anything, I'd liken it more to the character of Beetlejuice, played by Michael Keaton himself, getting a sequel this year. On paper, the character description is quite straightforward. A trickster and mischievous ghost. But on the screen, you see what Michael Keaton does with it, with his brilliance and expertise. Oh. Well, that's when the magic begins. To me, Depp did a similar thing with the character of Jack Sparrow. Drunken, charismatic. Morally grey. I like him already. <laughs> Jack is a legendary pirate of the seven seas, the irreverent trickster of the Caribbean. Yeah, fairly basic description. Then you see it in live action, and then you understand what all the fuss is all about. When Depp goes in on a character, he goes all in. I'm going deep, 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 deep undercover. He created this character from its original concept from the ground up, part inspired by ex Rolling Stoner Keith Richards, who eventually cameoed in the series as a character's own father. So what hope did Disney have at successfully putting off a reboot? Surely could hire a character actor like, I don't know, Matthew McConaughey who could successfully pull off an alternate mirror version of the character. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> a, it won't be the same guy. B, Depp's legion of fans are likely to boycott it into oblivion than pay a ticket to see it. Right, Mira? Do it. The other option is to gender swap the role. Typical of Disney. Back in June 2020, it was announced that Oscar nominee Margot Robbie would be the star of a new Pirates of the Caribbean movie at Disney, written by a Birds of Prey screenwriter, Christina Hodgson. Why? I have no idea. That died a death. Besides, <laughs> he likes a gender swap these days. Or a race swap. Heck, any swap. Which leaves only two options that potentially be even remotely successful. One, you start a spin-off franchise within the same universe. Maybe the same timeline. Should Depp ever change his mind and want to come back? I doubt it. Which ironically is a deal they just offered him. Apparently, come back. Just a cameo in a movie to start off a new trilogy without him. Are you crazy? 
That's so disrespectful. So disrespectful. That got me so high. Naturally, he told Bob Iger to go fund himself. Is that clear? I hope it is. Hey, Bob. And declined, leaving Disney with, in my opinion, the only option left available to them. Ladies and gentlemen, I've developed a device for traveling through time, which I call a time machine. That's right, you take it back to the beginning when the character was just a boy. A wee lad. Even you can't blanch to recast him without anybody raising an eyebrow. Blank slate to create an infinite run of movies. You must take the character anywhere you want to go. Save a fortune without a depth sized salary hole in a budget. But there's still two glaring obstacles standing in their way. One, is there a young actor out there today capable of even remotely matching the sheer brilliance that Depp brought to the role? I don't know. One name that constantly seems to be springing up in Hollywood is Tom Holland. Now, he's a likeable enough actor, but he lacks the gravitas the character of Jack Sparrow can sometimes demand. That darkness, you know. And then there's Timothy Chalamet, another name being banded around a lot. He the star of June and the Willy Wonka remake, itself a pseudo prequel to both the Depp and Gene Wilder movie. Now, I watched both June and the Willy Wonka movie and I found them to be fairly enjoyable. I found him to be a serviceable lead. I failed to see what all the fuss was all about is until I saw June 2. <laughs> And I got yeah, it, then I got it. That being said, there's a threat of him being overused and overexposed by the time June 3 comes out and whatever else he's attached to. I don't know, it's just audience can get tired of seeing the likes of these two on the screen and want uh, something new. Fresher face, perhaps. What I'm trying to make is that there are roles pretty much designed to allow anyone to jump in and Put out. Put your own spin on it, then move along. Then there are those roles that are, whilst fairly basic in inception, once particular actors put so much of their own self in there, their own unique unique talent into that role and filled and it out. The, the audience and the world at large pretty much embraced that character. It's hard to imagine anyone else the in kind of character this whole franchise rests on, in my humble opinion. <laughs> Good luck to Marvel trying to replace RDJ as Tony Stark. That was the plan. Not a great plan. But you know what? None of that actually matters. What? Look, besides all of that, the biggest obstacle standing in Disney's way when it comes to a Pirates of the Caribbean reboot isn't Johnny Depp. No? Uh, no. It isn't a fandom either. No, no, no. It's Disney itself. 68% of Disney World fans say the parks lost its magic. Americans losing trust in Disney report finds. Disney loses top spot in media and entertainment on Fortune's most admired companies list 2024. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. This company, once beloved by the entire world, is now scorned by it. Purely down to a string of really bad decisions. They just seem to be addicted to making. Maybe Pulse can fix it if he gets in there. Maybe not. Either way, I can't see any type of Pirates movie in any format making any kind of money. This is dead on arrival. Another ink blot on Iger's legacy. Heck, am I gonna be watching this? <laughs> no one will be. Say this right up front. Nothing below the belt. <laughs>